Hello there, my name is Anton Duplessis and I'm going to show you today how to do a deep learning segmentation on a turbine blade using Dragonfly. So, I've loaded up a 3D CT scan of a turbine blade that you can see on the top left and in any cross section you can manually inspect these slices for defects and geometry deviations but for any quantitative work um, you would like to segment the blade in order to um, quantitatively compare to geometry or export and mesh, for example. The problem with this is if you use a thresholding method is you have too little material selected near the tip and too much material in the inside of the curve, which is a typical problem because of um, beam hardening and image artifacts which occur due to this difficult, challenging um, material uh, or object. So what we do here is we're going to use a deep learning approach. How that works is you provide some ground truth slices which are colored in, uh, using some thresholding method or some segmentation method which can be refined and you can spend some time on getting a perfect segmentation in individual slices. In this case, we need three slices. So let's uh, use in particular slice number. Let's start off with slice number 1000. So I'm going to do the whole process here. So we're going to use slice 1000. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a region of interest called blade. So I'm going to make it blue. And we're going to add uh, to it. We're going to use the super pixels. So smart grid tool, also called super pixels. It uses a watershed algorithm in two dimensions, which nicely fits the curve and which I've discovered works quite ni nicely on this data. You can also use manual uh, methods and you can also smooth it. So you can spend a lot of time on individual slices um, as this is only used for training the model. Then um, the actual segmentation of the entire blade is not done based on um, human interaction and then the idea is that if you have a model that works you can apply that to hundreds of blades scanned in the same way. So I'm going to do that and what I'm going to do is I'm also going to create a mask at the same time and this is for the deep learning model to know in which area the training data is provided. So we're just going to color in that entire slice as the mask. So if we now go to slice 500. I can tell it to go there actually. I don't need to set slice 500. Right, let's do this one. So we highlighted the blade. We're going to do this. It's working quite nicely. I'm doing quite, this quite fast. You can spend more time on this, especially if you're training your first model um, and you want to use it for a long period of time, you might want to spend more time in getting the precise edges and also training more slices. In this case, we're limiting it to uh, and only a few slices, only three slices, but the more data you provide, the better it becomes. And we're going to create a mask here. Great. Now we go to slice 1500 to get a nice symmetry to it. So in this case, let's just make this mask again. And for the blade itself, just um, use the super pixels thing again. Very nice. So you can spend a lot of time in fixing this, um, but in this case, I just want to demonstrate the workflow from front to back within a reasonable period of time. So that's it. That's all we need. Right now we've got the blade. What we can do is we can create now a dense region of uh, dense multi ROI, which is input for the deep learning. So we go to artificial intelligence, deep learning tool, and we're going to tell it we want to create a new model today. We're going to do a 
we've got two classes, that's material and background, two and a half B, three slices input, we're going to call it turbine blade. And we're going to say this is the 7th of March. We're creating a unit model. It's not yet trained. So we need to train this model. And we're going to go to training. We're going to say, okay, turbine blade data itself, image channel is the input, the multi ROI is the output, and the mask has been defined like that. We're going to increase the augmentation. Um, you can use different amounts of augmentation. In this case, we want a visual feedback using a, a small window. So let's, let's say, for example, we want to see, let's choose a window here. And in that region of interest, 23, that will be used. So let's train it. So now we wait. Uh, shouldn't be taking too, too much time. I will cut the video if it takes too much time. i tell you after how much was cut from the video. So the first epoch is done and it's not doing very well. Second one looking a bit better. Third one a bit better even. And so it continues. We need quite a number of epochs. All right, so the deep learning model completed. We can now view every step in the process. This is the training that is completed. So we now have a model. So what we're going to do is we're now going to close this. And what we want to do is we want to actually take the turbine blade input and use this model and apply it to all slices. So this is the part which takes slightly longer. Okay, so I'm back. I stopped the video for the deep training model to apply to the turbine blade, but um, and that takes a bit of time. But you have to keep in mind that this kind of time is not user dependent. So it could run overnight in an automated workflow. So what we've got out, still the turbine blade 3D render there, but the blue purple color you see is the segmentation done by the deep learning model, which seems quite nice actually. If we click on the segmentation output, we can look at the blade or its complement. What we need, we would like to extract a class as a region of interest. So for this region of interest, um, I would like to see it in 3D and switch off the rendering. So what we are looking at now is simply the blade uh, from the deep learning model. And it does look pretty good. It's got a bit of, if you look carefully here, near the bottom of the blade, some loose bits and I'm going to just remove those by um, refining the region of interest by remove by keep the, the largest. In other words, remove all the small bits that are not connected. So that's quite nice. That worked quite well. What I want to do from this now is I want to create a mesh. Uh, so I want to generate a contour mesh, and that should also not take too long. This can be exported as an STL file, but it also allows us to visualize more easily what this uh, segmentation looks like exactly. So if we, and there we have it, a very nice segmentation of the blade. Of course, it can still even improve more. This is the result after using very quickly three uh, slice images and training a model. Um, so I hope you enjoy that. If you like this and it helps you, please um, like and subscribe our, on our YouTube channel. And please get in touch for me to demo uh, new and other features on your own data. Thanks a lot.